Hi and welcome. The last time I explained the binary operators to you, um, I had a very basic simulator. And I think many of you had problems to understand how the binary operators work. But with my new simulator, I think I can try again to explain it to you, especially because I have a better way to show you the calculation in detail. So let's start immediately with two modulation sources, LFO1 and LFO2, with a free phase, different speed of course, and let's include the first modifier. As you can see, the data entry sources modulation 1 and 2 are already selected and I'm going to choose the end operator as the first operation. And the result can be a bit confusing. As you can see here, the dark blue values are the modifier values. So what's happening here? Let me show you the calculation in detail. So this is the modulation card. And as you can see, we have sources for LFO 1 and 2. And here the modifier 1 is using source 1 and 2. And it's calculating a binary AND. In this case, source 1 has the value minus minus 20, uh, 52 here the red circle the second source has the value 114 the green circle and the binary result is 64 it's the dark blue circle now we have to talk about the interpretation of these values as you can see here minus 52 is resulting in a binary number of 11001100. And this is because of the calculation here in the, in the rear section. The first bit, the one here in the front, is indicating whether your number is positive or negative. When it's negative, minus 128 will be added to the uh, result and the other numbers here in the back are smaller than 127 which means that when you have just one values in your binary number this means minus one because you have minus 128 plus 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 positive values so in this case you have 2 to the power of 6 times 1 which is the one here then we have a 0 in the next position which is 2 to the power of 5 times 0 and so on and the last number is 2 to the power of 0 which is 1 and if you count all of this together, you get minus 52. And it's working for, for the second value, of course, the same way. In this case, this is a positive value. So we have a leading zero. And you get 114. And what the binary operator does is it compares the um, values of both binary numbers. So this row here is now the column here on up to down, the first column. And the second row here, this number, is the second column. And now the operator is asking these questions. Are 1 and 1 both equal 1? This is the end. 
they both have to be one. The first um, binary position and for the second source, the binary position. If no, then you get a zero. Are one and one both equal one? Yes, then you get a one and so on. So the resulting number or binary number is this one. You can also zoom out a bit, this one. And if you're recalculating this binary number again, just as in one of these calculations, you get the result 64. And it's working similar for different modifiers. So when you're choosing the OR operator, you have simply different questions here. Is 1 or 0 equal 1? Yes, because of the first one. Is 1 or 1 equal 1? Yes, they are both 1. And only if you have like this, is 0 or 0 equal 1? No, there is no 1. So you get a 0. And this again is resulting in a binary number. And the last binary operator is the exclusive OR operator. Which has the questions, is either 1 or 0 equal 1? So, as you can see in the second question, is either 1 or 1 equal 1? No, they are both 1, but only 1, 1 is allowed. So that you get a 0. This is what the X means. X stands for exclusive. And because of the nature of these binary calculations, you get very wild modulation results. So when I hide the calculations again and start the simulator, you can see very different, very um, wild um, results of the modifiers. In the next video I want to show you how you can use the binary AND to reduce um, the resolution of your modulation source. If you like this video, make a thumbs up, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.